After the Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declare to him your beloved son grant that your children by adoption reborn of water and the holy spirit may always be well pleasing to you through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, <clears throat> Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. 
Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The heavens were opened, and the voice of the Father thundered. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's very customary that on the feast day, the solemnity of the baptism of our Lord, that the Holy Father would baptize infants in the Sistine Chapel in Rome. It is something that was started by Pope St. John Paul II in the early 80s, and then subsequently Pope Benedict continued the tradition, as is also the case with Pope Francis. So with infant baptism, I thought it was such a privilege that these babies would be baptized by the Holy Father, so I'm always curious as to who who are the chosen ones, and I'm sure it it would turn out to be children of those who work in the Vatican, for example, children of the Swiss Guards, whereas typically on a Saturday, we have lots of infant baptism right here by less illustrious clerics, basically your priest over there in the rectory, and I, of course, also get a lot of private baptism requests, and they're in the rites of baptism, R-I-T-E, in the rites of baptism, there's something that I, I would always point out to parents and godparents. It's essentially right before the baptism, you have the recitation of the Apostles' Creed, essentially. And then even preceding that, you go through renouncing the devil and all his works, the renunciation of his evil works. And it basically will begin with like, do you renounce Satan and all of those present would say, I do, and his, all his empty works, his empty promises. And there was actually a scene that I may have pointed out to you in the past uh, in the, the first Godfather movie, okay, a movie that has been watched by some of the priests, where 
the scene would depict a young Al Pacino, Michael Corleone, and he went through and he, he renounced Satan and his empty promises and so forth. And juxtaposed with that scene, as some of you may remember, was a montage of all the, what his men were doing to all the other godfathers. And I point that out because it's somewhat ironic that what he was professing was in stark contrast to what his, he was doing. In other words, works of evil. Okay. Complete contradiction between what he did with his life and then what he was professing. So the whole point to me mention, mentioning that is it may, let it may not be said of us that we are like that. In other words, you and I who've been baptized, we have to make sure that our lives are in complete accordance with what we profess. In other words, acts of virtue. And so, for us, whenever we dipped our hand in the holy water font and we make the sign of the cross, I always instruct non-Catholics especially that that's just a renewal of our baptism. That we should constantly call, and call to mind and beseech God to shower upon us the grace of our baptism. And he is always doing that. We should pray for the grace to be receptive to God's graces. And that begins with us reminding ourselves each day that the calling or the discernment that we are to, the calling that we are given each day would be that of conversio morum, conversio morum, the Latin for conversion of ways. Essentially, renouncing sin and turning back to God. It's that simple. This Christian vocation, something that we religious even professed as vows. The renunciation of sin, turning back to God, conversion of ways. So it is even said that after baptism, for, for especially for adults, it's been said that right upon being baptized, if one were to die, and you would go straight to heaven. So once again, if one were to die, you would go straight to heaven after baptism, okay? You skip all the jail time, which is purgatory. So those of us who happen to be lingering, to be lingering, we're not as fortunate, then we have this thing called confession, okay? Because I always joke, because when I mention to the high schoolers that that's the case, I would always say that, well, but just give it two minutes, and that little window's gone, okay? So make sure I tell them to use frequent, frequent reception of the sacrament of confession, something that's very much neglected in society. And that way we can, through the medicinal help of that particular sacrament, we will be restored back to good health. So as we go forth this day, may we continue to go forth rejoicing, rejoicing because today is the last day of the Christmas season. So today's the last day of Christmas season. Tomorrow we go back to green, ordinary time. However, and this is absolutely a tangent, that stays up until February 2nd, as you remember from past years. It's the presentation of our Lord that we take that down. And then for sure, I will make sure Father Andrew clears that by Ash Wednesday, which is mid-February, because otherwise we're just really lazy people. So let us go forth once again rejoicing and witnessing to the world by our conversion, the conversion of our ways. The rubric, even though it's a feast day, tells me to recite the creed. We are going to recite the Apostles' Creed, a shorter version, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God sent his son to live as one of us, demonstrating unconditional love. Trusting in his goodness, let us offer our prayers this day. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Holy Spirit inspire and strengthen them as they lead souls to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may God move their hearts in working for religious freedom in all countries and territories. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here, and we pray for the good health of our beloved Jen Butcher, may God enable us to live the grace of our baptism as children of our merciful Father. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> for all who have died in Christ, and we pray for the repose of the soul of Noel Gregorowicz. Noel Gregorowicz, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the repose of the soul of Stephen Hillis. May God receive them with joy into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> heavenly Father, you know our needs before we do. Please answer these prayers according to your wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to you honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Tom, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, quit holy speccata mundi, 
misere re nobis, agnus dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, misere re nobis, agnus dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave.